Shoo, that's bright. You all look different up here. <laughs> Good morning to all of you. All of us know the story about David and Goliath. So I'm not going to tell you the story about David and Goliath. But I am going to tell you a story about my David. My David taught me to sew when I really didn't even know much more than what a sewing machine was. I made my first dress and I got as far as the zipper. And I said, Mama, will you put this zipper in for me? Knowing that she would. She looked at me and she said, no. But she said, I'll be right here. And she was. She sat right there with me every step of the way and encouraging me. My David taught me to cook. I stayed with mom and dad, Patrick's mom and dad, when he was in the uh, military, his basic training. And she taught me how to cook. I think if she thought if she didn't, her son would probably starve to death. And he might have. My David brought Wendy an Easter dress when she knew that we couldn't. My David brought a set of bunk beds and two chests for Patrick and Jonathan when she knew that we couldn't. Sometime in her 30s, my David met her Goliath. You see, she was told that she had glaucoma, and she knew what that was because her dad had it, and he had already gone blind. She told us at that time that she was determined that she was going to fight it with everything that she had, and she did. She went to Duke for treatment. She tried numerous medications. But over the years, she began to lose her eyesight. She became legally blind. We could take her to a restaurant. The waitress would hand her a menu, and she would look at that menu, and she would look up, and she would give the waitress her order, the waitress never knowing that she was blind. She would always order something that she could handle herself. Most of the time it was french fries or shrimp, something that she could politely eat with her fingers. She would always take your arm. She never wanted you to take hers. She continued to put on her makeup and her lipstick, just like she always did. You see, she wasn't being, being vain or prideful. She just didn't want to be treated any differently. She wanted to keep her dignity. After Granddaddy died, she was completely blind by that time. And she lived by herself. Patrick would go down before school, fix her breakfast, fix her lunch and put it in the refrigerator. He could open the kitchen door and step in and she'd say, son, is that you? Yeah, mom, it's me. She was determined that she was going to learn to read footsteps and she did. She learned her children and when one of the grandchildren she walked in, she'd either say, Wendy, Patrick, what she called Little Patrick Mouth. And she'd say, John? Yeah, Granny, it's me. Doing all of this, I got to thinking, do we have a David in our life? Someone that we could go and talk to someone that will lift us up in prayer and encourage us 
along our way. And then on the other hand, is there a Davy that we know that we need to lift up and give encouragement to? I know I do. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for the people that you place in our lives. People that will lift us up, encourage us, God. Help us all, Father God, to meet our challenges like David. All right, good morning, Uplift Church. So glad to be here this morning. Uh, that was my mom that done her intro this morning. Y'all show her some love. She just so thankful for sharing. Anytime that we get to come up and we get to share, you know, something personal uh, like that and make it relatable, uh, you know, there's a part of you that's, uh, you know, it's vulnerable. And um, sometimes we don't, we don't like to share, you know, certain things. And uh, we don't like, always like to share, you know, our struggles and uh, not be able to afford, you know, um, a daughter uh, an Easter dress or whatever. And so over these past uh, few months, you've heard from different people that shared from the stage. And uh, Ernie shared last week, you know, very powerful. Courtney shared, uh, you know, prior to that. And we just had so many people that shared and from their hearts. And they're just trying to be real. And I think that that's what, I think that's what, Jesus had in mind when he told us that we need to focus on relationships, the relationship with God and relationship with people. is just be real. Don't be fake. Just be real. Just be real. Just let people know exactly who you are. We often like to put up a wall uh, to show one thing, but inside it's something else. It's just an opportunity just to be real. Just to be real. And we're going to give you an opportunity to be real this morning. I'm going to have you to stand to your feet. Shake somebody's hand, tell them good morning, uh, tell somebody you're praying for them, whatever it may be. Uh, maybe you want to tell Ernie a great job from last week or mom from this morning. Just going to stand up. We're just going to shake hands. Tell somebody good morning. Opportunity just to be real with them. We're just so thankful that you've joined us online here today. Uh, it's just an opportunity just for us just to stretch our legs. Tell somebody good morning, and we just thank you so much for joining us and watching us online. Uh, we just thank you so very much. I love you all. Hey, Denver. Can we give me five, buddy? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. You still got your truck? No truck? I know it. Much better. Ah. Thank you guys for participating with us and just taking a minute just to say good morning to people. Uh, this is just something very powerful that we can share and just say good morning. Uh, just say good morning. And uh, I think that if we're honest, sometimes, you know, uh, well, I say like us, you know, we came in on two wheels this morning. Um, at least I felt like we did. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, we all do something, I say it's just a little different on Sunday mornings and, um, Man, I absolutely love this series, talking about praise, um, and particularly about the power, the power of praise. And there's something that happens in this, and I, I got a phone call this week, and somebody was sharing praise. And it was their praise. They, they just, they just want to share a praise. It was uh, kind of like an answer prayer, an open opportunity, and they shared with me. But they shared that with me, giving God praise for what had happened, but it hit me. Like, it lifted me up hearing from that praise. And then it hit me. I was like, this is what it's about. Like, we are to share our praises with one another. And not that you have to go out audibly and, you know, blast it all everywhere. But you've got key relationship in your life that you share good news with, that you share, that you share praise with. That you share praise with. 
And it should be the people that are really closest to you. Uh, every Sunday morning, we gather together at 10 o'clock. Uh, you're more welcome to come and join us at 10 o'clock. We come and we pray together. And we pray over those that are going to be on stage specifically. And if we have any new person that's going to be serving in any of our areas, we always pray over them. But we're just praying that God has richly blessed them. Well, this morning I asked my dad if he would lead that prayer since mom was doing the intro. And in this prayer, he made a reference to mom as being the love of his life. I shared this great relationship. And it's something that's so awesome about seeing that this sharing of praise with one another and it just does something to us whenever we can share in that praise and so i just want to take this morning and share some praise with you that we're able to do this every week last week uh monique and brian done our audio video uh thanks for so much this week super david supreme are back y'all show them some love making this happen it's just and it's awesome all right if you got here between 10 and 10 30 you kind of have to get here closer to 10 if you want to get some but we have got an awesome baker who every week bakes treats so you guys can enjoy it. It's Laura Bledsoe right over here. Y'all show her and last you some love. And it's just, it's, it's so awesome because we get to enjoy this. And I'm always too late. <laughs> always too late. And I was really disappointed because last week was cinnamon rolls. Um, I don't know what was this week. But anyway, I, I'm like a cinnamon roll connoisseur. Like, I love cinnamon rolls. Uh, but this praise, whenever we, it, it just does something to us. It, it, it lifts, it lifts us. It just it lifts us up. Um, I already mentioned you, Ernie and, and Mom, for what they uh, for what they shared last week. I'm super excited, and y'all be praying for her next week. Melanie's going to be bringing the message. Y'all show her some love. It's it's going to be awesome. You're not going to want to miss next week. And then uh, we've got some great youth pastors, uh, Jason, Diane, and what they do. Uh, the rest of the youth are out in different areas serving. They got three of their boys back here that are, um, I mean, they just do an awesome job with their youth. They are investing in, in your kids. Y'all show them some love. I mean, it's awesome about what they, what they do. And uh, I've got girls in youth, and they actually, they, I mean, they, they want to go. I mean, to get a teenager to want to do anything is challenging. But to, to go to church and be involved with youth, just like, man, they, they want to go. They don't go, Oh, do we have to go? No, they, they want to go. They're telling us, hey, it's time to get ready. They're like, it's, it's 4 o'clock. We've got half an hour. Okay, we just don't want to be late. Uh, don't want to be late. I don't know if it's they want to get the good snacks or they want to beat the guys. To the, I'm not sure what it is, but they, they, love, they love going. And see, this is the part of praise that if we can, I say harness it, but exercise it, I think is the better word. Exercise the praise. See, too many times, like, we're looking for the negative. You can have a hundred things go right in your day and one thing happen, and what does it do? It wrecks your whole day. We, we focus on all, instead of focusing on all the good stuff, we're focusing on that, that one little thing. See, we, we don't like trouble. We don't handle that well. We like it when things are smooth sailing, when everything's going good. That's what we like. However, she didn't go into detail this morning, but my mom has been in so many battles, uh, it, it's, it's unreal, uh, particularly with, uh, with health. She is a two-time breast cancer survivor. I uh, mean, it's just huge. Um, she's talking about, uh, about being a David. Um, she is. She is, and she's been a lot and a blessing to so many other people. And we don't like going into battles. Nobody wants to go to the doctor and hear the C word. Nobody wants to come home uh, to an argument. Uh, nobody wants a phone call from the school. Uh, nobody wants a bad test result. But yet we had these things. Yesterday it was uh, one of the best days. Uh, me and a group of guys, great friends, and we were on the golf course. And then I get a text from my wife that says, hey, I think our refrigerator's broke. And I, Okay. Well, take care of it, babe. I mean, nobody wants to get, you know, those things that says, hey, this is broke. This is broke. So what do we do? It, it's inevitable. Uh, trouble is going to come our way. We're going to find ourselves in the middle of some kind of battle. It's coming at you. And so what, what do you do when a battle's in front of you? And some of you may be here today, this morning, and there is a battle in front of you. 
There's a battle in front of you. How do you handle that? What do you do? Here at the church, we're having a battle with uh, our heat pump here in this worship area. Some Sundays it works awesome. Today is not one of those days. What do you do when you have a battle? What do you do when things at home, there's, there's a battle? Or at, at work, there's, there's a battle. A battle. And I choose the word battle because it's something that you have to fight your way through. That you're going to have to hit head on. Not just, not just pain, uh, not just an issue, but a battle. Well, there is a very powerful battle plan that I want to share with you this morning. This is in the Old Testament, Second Chronicles. Because if we know that we've got a battle coming up, typically we'll prepare in many different ways. Many different ways. Some of you, uh, you have to get uh, prepare for battle when you're getting ready to go to a family get-together. You have to put your battle plan together, your, your game face on, because you know that so-and-so is going to be there, and you know what it's going to be. Am I right? Some of you have to do this every, every morning because you're getting ready to go to work, and you know that person's going to be there. You know this project's in front. You, you know what you've got to do. And sometimes we, our, part of our battle plan is, is to go ahead and get on guard, defense, and we're ready. So as soon as that person or that event comes at us, I mean, we are ready to leap. There's a better battle plan. And this is in Second Chronicles, chapter 20. And uh, this is just a very unique story and how this works out. And I pray that today you're going to leave with a battle plan for your life because we are either going into a battle, coming out of one, or in the middle of one. This is very powerful. Uh, it reads in the first verse, Now it came about after this that the sons of Moab and the sons of Ammon, together with some of the Midianites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was king over Judah. Then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you. Do you hear that? A great, multi a great multitude is coming against you. Do you ever feel like there's a multitude of things that ever come against you? You feel like you can't ever get ahead. Every time you get ahead, something else happens. Every time you finally get a little bit of money in the head, <laughs> A refrigerator breaks. Or every time you finally get a little bit of peace in your home, there's another argument. Every time you gain a little bit of ground with your teenager, something else happens. A great multitude is coming against you. And from beyond the sea, out of Aram, and behold, they were in Hazan Tamar. Jehoshaphat, he was afraid. And he turned his attention to seek the Lord. How many times do we do that in a battle plan? See, I'm a fixer. And so yesterday, as I was enjoying the golf with these great guys, in my mind I was thinking, all right, what's my, what's my game plan here? How am I going to handle this refrigerator? What, what, am, what am I going to do? And so I was starting to put pieces together. I did not turn my attention to the Lord. Immediately I went to, here's what I'm going to do. He was afraid and he turned his attention to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. Now a fast was proclaimed by kings during this time in which all, it was a way of getting all the people to turn their attention to the Lord. Because if you're going hungry, it's going to get your attention. Because nobody likes to be hungry. Nobody does. So it's a way of turning your attention. So he proclaimed his fast. And so Judah, all of Judah, gathered together to seek help from the Lord. And they even came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Here was the first part of the battle plan, was seeking the Lord. The very first part. If we could do this every Monday morning, I think it would help us all throughout the week. To seek the Lord. That we would turn our attention to the Lord. This is why coming to church is so important. You can be a Christian and not come to church. So that has nothing to do with your salvation. But if you want to grow and nurture that relationship between you and the Heavenly Father, you have got to come here. You've got to be cultivated with His people and His Word. There's no other way to do it. We are together to seek the Lord. And they gather together to seek him here's your first step in your battle plan is to seek the lord seek the lord in church we are to seek him collectively and as individuals see coming to church on this one hour or two however long that's not enough to get you through could you imagine if you only got one meal a week how's that going to work for you i'm just going to tell you my belly's already growling for lunch my breakfast is done gone so if you can imagine going an entire week on one meal, this is why you've got to get in and cultivate your relationship with the Father during the week because you need 
more. We come collectively, but individually we are to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Now, we are not proclaiming a fast, but we are encouraging you in your battle plan. First step is to seek the Lord. Seek Him. Church, there's something powerful when you seek Him and then you come collectively with a group of people to seek Him. It's just a recipe for God to do something amazing. Would you like for God to do something amazing in your life? What about in your battle right now? What about what's in front of you right now? Some of you got a mountain so big that it's going to take an act of God before it can happen. Something so unreal. Something so... Like there's no way it can happen unless God intervenes. That it would take a God intervention. You need something big to happen? All the world was against him right then. All these countries were against him. All these eyes were against them, and they were scared. And under the leadership of Jehoshaphat, they turned their attention. They were seeking the Lord. Then look at verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat, he stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and he said, he led this prayer, O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not God in the heavens? Are you not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hands so that no one can stand against you. I love this. And you can keep on reading. But what Jehoshaphat is doing is leading the people in praise to the Father. And they're doing this. Are you not this? Are you not the same one that led Israel through dry ground across the Red Sea? Are you not the one who's delivered us through all these enemies? And he's leading this prayer. And in his prayer, he is praising God. He's praising God even though all these other enemies are coming against them. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm in the middle of a battle, it's very hard for me to flip a switch and start giving praise to God in the middle of what I'm doing. It's really hard. Last summer, we were on this great trip out west, and we were having tire issues on the camper. And before we left, I told myself, And I literally had a conversation that, listen, things are not going to go the way that we want them to go. It's not going to be perfect. So here we were in the middle of nowhere out in the country near Wyoming. And out there you can go for miles upon miles upon miles. And all you see is pasture field after pasture field after pasture field. There's literally nothing. And then all of a sudden in this one spot there's a rest area. So we stopped. Girls go in, they were itching to spend their money, so Amanda takes them to the vending machine. I'm out here checking the camper tires, so I'm like, this is not going to go well. So me and our oldest daughter, Abney, here we are, we're changing the tire at this rest stop. All these vehicles are passing right by here in Wyoming, changing this tire because we're not going to make it very much further because the wires are about to show through. And it's very hard for me not to get frustrated and aggravated and go, Lord, I thank you for this trip that we're on. But I did it. Because I went into this with the intention, this is how this is going to go. We're going to praise the Lord. And I wish I could tell you that was the only thing that happened. It wasn't. We didn't even make it to our first great destination with... uh, I never can remember the name of it, but the mountain with the faces on it, Mount Rushmore, thank you. Mount Rushmore. Here we are, we're finally going. We had a game plan where we're going, we were on our way, and then the brakes wasn't working. Every time you touch the brakes, everybody in the vehicle, their head would slam forward, and it was a brake problem on the camper. We're dealing with this. We stop at Advanced Auto, we're changing the wire, we're underneath that, I'm covered in sweat, and the whole time I was like, thank you, Lord, we're on this trip. It was hard. And I'd get in a vehicle every time. You know what my wife would say? Did you get it? Yeah, babe, I think I got it. I think I got it. And we're going. We're getting to a red light. And I'm like, Lord, please let this work when I hit the brakes. And I'm just easing into it. And I go, I, I think it's fixed. Then all of a sudden, ka-ching! And then man would be like, babe, I don't think it's working. I got it. And this went on for six hours. Six hours. We're pulling to a church parking lot. They're getting ready for the VPS. Kids are coming. Cars are coming. Here we are out there. You know what my kids are doing? 
They got their scooters out of their camper and they're riding around while dad's underneath the camper trying to fix the brakes. They're having the time of their life. And the whole time I'm like, Lord, thank you that we're going on this trip. Just giving God praise through that. Giving God praise through that. They didn't care. We finally got to Mount Rushmore, had the time of our life. It was absolutely awesome. A little bit later, we're traveling around, you know, we're crowing across. <laughs> I had no idea it was going to be this bad, but went across Teton Pass, which is a super high mountain, and it's a super steep, both sides. It's like steep both ways. I already told you we're having brake problems on the camper, so we're coming across the other side, and uh, as soon as we crossed over, I was like, Lord, touch our brakes. Just touch our brakes. Well, we make it a few miles, and I'm like, I smell something, I'm not going to say it. Maybe it's just me. It's a car in front of us. And then he goes, I think our brakes are hot. And I'm like, yeah, I think they are too. So we kept on going. And I'm like, we have got to stop. We have got to stop. So there's this pull-off. And I see this pull-off. It's about 100 yards long. And we're pulling off. And I'm like, Lord, please help us stop. So I pull off. And I take the brake pedal. And church, it goes to the floor. All these cars are finally, they're going past us. Not finally, this guy is out of the road. And we're coming near the end of this emergency stop. And I'm like, Lord, there's a guardrail down there and a big cliff. I need you. And I don't say this audibly. I'm just saying it to myself. And we get about from here, uh, maybe right here where Brian is, away from the end. And it stops and smoke starts rolling from the brakes. Just rolling. Thank you, Lord that we're going on this trip. Thank you, Lord. So what my girls do, they don't get their scooters out because the man won't let them since it's near the road. So they get chalk and they're writing signs. Hey guys, anybody stops here, have a great trip, safe travels. The whole time, dad's freaking out like, man, these brakes are just toast. Thank you, Lord, that we're going on this trip. But what we were able to do through this environment was have an amazing time. I didn't realize it at the time that it was a battle plan going on a trip about just praising God. Regardless, have a great trip. We're on our way back. And Amanda starts talking to me. We're on our way home. And she says, you've been different on this trip. Like, you've not been aggravated or anything, even though we've had plenty of opportunities. And I went, yeah, I know. I had a pep talk with myself before we went. She said, are we that bad? You have to have a pep talk? I went, no, it's, it's not you all. But do you see the difference in the attitude? Church, when we seek the Lord through battles, not only is it going to change your attitude, it fixes your heart, your attention on the one that can lead you through it. Trouble's going to come. Your brakes are going to go out. There's going to be family issues. There's going to be arguments. There's going to be fights. There's going to be a health problem. There's going to be these things. Can you imagine what would happen if we could go into this? Regardless, we're going to praise Him. Regardless of the outcome. Church, that's what they do. And that's what they're doing. Why don't you look at what happens. This is verse 14. In the midst of the assembly, they're there praying together. In the midst of the assembly, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benai, the son of Jael, the son of Matanai, the Levite of the sons of Aspah. And he said, so this is just a long story of people to tell you he was a priest. Listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you. This is what we want in our battle plan. We want the Lord to speak. Here's what we want you to do. Here's what the Lord says. Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Whew. Church, this is powerful. Seek the Lord. Pray. And we need to understand that the battle is not ours, it's His. It's not ours, it's His. Church, if you don't leave with anything else here today, this is the statement that I want you to leave with. May it be upon your hearts, your mind's freshly, write it down, put it on your refrigerator. This verse, the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. They turned their attention to the Lord, and He told them and reminded them that the battle is not theirs. It's His. You got a battle in front of you? It's His. It's His. Verse 18. Jehoshaphat bowed with his head face to the ground. This is powerful, church. He heard this, got this battle plan, and all of you and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord, led by Jehoshaphat the king. They all worshiped. They're getting ready to go to battle, 
and they worshipped. They worshipped. The Levites from the sons of the Kothites and the sons of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a very loud voice. Their enemy has surrounded them. They're going in the battle and they're singing. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody's being happy and you just want to tell them just to be quiet? Like, you don't want that right now. It goes completely against my nature. I want everything to be quiet. I can't handle that right now. No. It's just the same thing with the kids out there writing out chalk. Safe travels. The brakes are smoking. They don't care. This is why it's very important that we lead our families by example and praise the Lord. There's something coming against you. Praise the Lord. It's the time to sing. And I know you don't feel like it. They all together, they stood together, and they worshipped. They praised the Lord. And I love that they were led by example. All because they knew the battle was not theirs. It was his. So they just started worshipping. They started worshipping. So they went to battle. They went to battle. And I think this is absolutely ridiculous what they do here. Okay? I think this is ridiculous. Verse 20. They rose up early in the morning and they went out of the wilderness to Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord your God and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. I love these words. Guys, put your trust in him and succeed. All you got to do is trust him. Trust him. And see, our mind is saying, that's great, but trust don't put food on the table. That's great, but trust don't help my brakes. Yeah, that's great, but trust don't fix my spouse. But does it? Put your trust in the prophets and succeed. I'm sorry. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord. I love this. He appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire. And they went out before the army. Before the army. And said, give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. They led the military in battle and they sang. They were ahead of the infantry to sing praises to the Lord. Does that sound like a battle plan to you? It does not to me. I mean, if I'm going to have anything to do with music going into a battle, we're going to be playing some kind of theme from Rocky or Eye of the Tiger. Uh, we will rock you. We're going to do something to build us up so that we can go and that we can... We're going into battle. I mean, could you imagine a, a football coach going up and saying, all right, guys, let's sing praises to the Lord. Amazing grace. Who's ready to go get some? It, sound, it sounds crazy. But church, this is their battle plan. Why? Because they realize the battle's not theirs. It's his. And they go in the battle, and they lead it up, and they sing. And it sounds crazy, I know. It makes no sense. They went in the battle and they sang. Look at verse 22. When they began singing and praising, the Lord sent ambushes against the son of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sir, who had come against Judah, so they were routed. For the sons of Ammon and Moab Robet rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Sir, destroying them completely. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Sir, they helped destroy one another. Listen. Judah. The nation of Judah that all these people were against, they didn't lift a sword. They had their stuff. They had their battle gear on. They were ready. The people leading the worship were in front of them. They were going in the battle and singing. And the enemy were ambushing each other. Judah didn't lift a sword. Many of us are more about lifting the sword. We're going in the battle. We're fixers. We're going to get it done. Church, they prayed and they worshiped. And the Lord really took care of the battle. Now, we're not saying that all you got to do is come to church and worship and everything is going to be all right. But when we fix our eyes on the Lord, He will lead us and guide us into the battle. He'll lead us and guide us into the battle. This is not really how we handle 
a battle, whenever we hear of about an illness. I mean, what do we do? How, how do we handle that battle? When it's going to the doctor, well, when you hear about the doctor, you research, and then you Google it, which is not advised, but we Google it. And sometimes we change doctors because we don't like that doctor's opinion, so we go to another doctor's opinion. We get opinions from other people. What do you think I should do? What do you think about this? Church, our battle plan should be, we're going to seek the Lord. We're going to seek the Lord. We're going to praise Him whether things are in our favor or not. We're going to praise Him. All right, we keep on going. What about when you have a battle at home? How do you normally handle that? Well, we try to get support. We try to get somebody on our side. Church, I'm talking about seeking the Lord with all you've got. And let Him lead you and guide you. What about when you have big decisions in front of you? How do you handle that? Do you complain do you still try to get somebody on your side? Church, if there is a battle in front of you, then you need to seek the Lord. Or, or better yet, if there's a battle in front of you, you need to praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord in front of the battle, in the middle of the battle, and at the end of the battle. Praise the Lord. Church, this is exactly what Job did. He praised the Lord regardless. He, I mean, all the wealth... All the family, this guy had it going on. And when he lost everything, he said, well, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What? He lost all that stuff and he praised the Lord. Church, is there a battle in front of you that you need to praise the Lord through? And church, sometimes it takes all that you've got just to praise. It takes all you've got, but church, when we do, we fix our eyes on him. And he leads us. There's some of you here today and you've got a battle that you're in right now. You've got something that you're in, it's in front of you and you're going to have to deal with it. Church, it's time to praise him through that battle. Turn our attention to the Lord. That's exactly what Jehoshaphat did. He turned his attention to the Lord. And maybe you've been turning your attention to everybody, everywhere else and it's time to turn your attention to the Lord. To really listen about what the battle plan is he's given you. Others of you, Man, you're, you've already turned your attention to the Lord. You're waiting. Okay, God, what do you want? Pray. And you need to include praise in your prayer. This is what Jehoshaphat did. They were praising. God, look at all the things that you've done. So when you pray, you need to praise God for the things he's done in your life. In your life. Praise him. Recognize the great things that he's done. And church, he's not done with you yet. He wasn't done with the nation of Judah here yet. So what they, what they did is they started praising God. All right, we're going to praise God. Everybody get your church hymn, we're going into battle. And that's what they did. In church, it was so powerful. This praise, this worship was so powerful that the enemy destroyed one another. What's in front of you, it's not too big for God. I know sometimes we get the idea, the impression that we can't make it through it. We can't do this on our own. And I would say, yes, you can't. Maybe you need to be like what mom said and you need to be a lot an encouragement to somebody else. I'm going to tell one more story on my mom before we close. Before we got married, uh, just so you know, my dad is just like me and I'm just like my dad. Okay? So when I say this, I'm talking to myself because I'm a spitting image replica of him. We're almost the same height. He works for the school system. I work for the school system. He was a teacher. Uh, I'm a computer guy. He taught, com he taught computers, and I'm a computer guy. Okay? He was a pastor. I'm a pastor. It's just Pat Johnson, PJ. Same guy, but much different. Me and Amanda were getting ready to get married. And he said, before y'all get married, y'all need to do this book. And this book was a financial book on marriage and planning and, and finances and all that. And uh, I remember me and Amanda were sitting on my couch, and uh, I had this coffee table, and we're going through this. And she said, we can't get married? With what money? We, we can't do this. And we, we had money, but it was a very elaborate book, and you had to save a whole lot of money up and really divide up your money in a certain way. Anyway, Dad was doing what he thought was best, and, and it was really good advice. Mom came in. What you kids doing? <laughs> we're trying to figure out how we're going to get married. She's like, well, why can't you? He's like, well, this book, according to this book, we, we can't. She said, let me see it. And she took the book from her hands. She set it down. She said, if you kids want to get married, you go get married. Now, that's not my advice for everybody, and I would not tell my kids that today. <laughs> but what she did was encourage us. Encourage us. 
And what we were able to do is that we were able to take the principles from that book and apply it to our lives. Maybe you need to be an encouragement to somebody else. Maybe there's somebody in your life right now that's going through a battle. You need to be that person to step up and encourage them. Encourage them. Help them through the battle. Be there to hold their hand. Church life's not easy. No part about it. But if we can, we can turn our attention to the Lord. Seek Him. Praise Him. Have some people in our life that will encourage us and support us. Church, it'll go a long way to find the Lord's will for your life. Church, is there a battle in front of you that you need to praise the Lord through? Are you in a battle right now? Or do you, is there a battle in front of you that you need to praise the Lord through? Church, then praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him for the great things that He's done. Praise Him for what He's going to do. What I find amazing through this entire story is that the Lord did not tell the nation of Judah the entire plan. He didn't lay it out in front of them and say, all right, guys, here's what we're going to do. You're going to uh, go out into battle, and you're going to worship. And as you sing and praise, uh, I'm going to cause the enemy to destroy one another. They didn't know that. They went into battle prepared to fight, but they led it with praise. In your life, you need to be prepared to go through that battle, go through that fight. But let praise be upon your lips. Let praise be upon your heart. And you just watch what God does. We're not saying the battle's easy. We're not saying that in the blink of eye and it'll be over. But when you have the Lord leading you, it will be sweet. Is there a battle in front of you that you need to seek the Lord through? We encourage you right now to do exactly what Jehoshaphat led Judah to do and turn your attention to him. We're going to kill the lights and we are going to have an opportunity for you to turn your attention to him. Turn your attention to him. Whatever that looks like. Now I wanted this to be kind of dark where you could just focus your attention on him. There's a battle in front of you that I encourage you right now to turn your attention to Him. Turn your attention to Him. Right now, right now is the time to pray. Give him, give him some praise through your prayer. That's what Jehoshaphat did. Lord, look at what great things you've done. Lord, look how you've led us. Moved. Right now, as the Holy Spirit moves and works in your life, right now, this altar is open. If you feel led to come and pray, maybe there's a battle in front of you. You need to just to get in front of the presence of the Lord. Then come to this altar and pray. Some of you right here today, and man, you don't know where to go. You don't know where to turn to. Turn your attention towards Him. Just seek Him through praise. Praise Him. He's not done with you yet. Praise Him. Praise Him. How's the Lord moving in your life right now? Praise Him. Battle not easy? Praise Him. You don't know how the battle's going to end? Praise Him. You don't know where to turn? Praise Him. Praise Him. We just want to create an opportunity for you to seek Him. You need to come to the altar this morning. Church right here. It is open for you to come. Maybe you and your family. Maybe just you. Come to this altar. And seek him. Praise him. Heavenly Father, as we come to a close today, we turn our eyes, our attention towards you. 
Father, you're not done with us yet. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. We praise you, Lord, for the things that you're done. We praise you, Father, for the things in which you've, you've done so much for us in the past. And this morning we praise you. We praise you for salvation. We thank you, Father, so much for Jesus. We praise you, Father, that you're not done with us yet. We're a work in progress. Help us, Lord, as we seek you. I encourage you right now just to keep continuing. There are things you need to praise the Lord for. Praise Him through the storm. Tell the Lord. Joseph, they were scared. Tell the Lord right now your battle. Tell Him what's going on in your life. Tell Him. He cares about you. Tell Him what you've got going on. He wants to hear from you. This morning, if you've got a battle going on in your life and you'd like to have somebody to pray for you, may we have the opportunity to pray for you. We'd love that. We'd love to be able to do that. Nobody's going to single you out. But we'd love to have the opportunity to pray for you. If there's something going on in your life right now, would you just like to have somebody to pray over? I'm just going to have you just to raise your hand up and say, hey, i got something going on right now. Wow, there's hands going up everywhere. Yeah, we're going to pray. If you hated it, is there more? Yeah. Heavenly Father, you see these hands? They represent Father somebody. It's got a battle going on and they need prayer. We lift them up to you, Father. And we just ask that you do a great work. Help them, Father, through this battle. Strengthen them, Father, for this journey. That this experience, to be able to give you praise and glory and honor all the way through the battle. You know what's needed and you know what's going on. So lead them, Father, through this battle. Fill them up, God, with your Holy Spirit. That as we continue to praise you, Father, whether things are in our favor or not, God, that you just do what you do. Lead us, Father, like you did, Judah. Help us, Father, just to continue to trust you and allow you to lead us as we go through these battles. For you're not done with us yet. As you continue to pray, there's an opportunity to continue to talk to the Lord. Just to talk to the Lord. Whatever's going on in your life. Whatever's going on in your life. I just want to give you a minute just to be quiet. Just let you talk to the Lord. However He may be leading you. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for this praise. Thank you for the worship this morning, turning our attention towards you. We thank you, Father, that you're not done with us yet. Thank you, Father, so much that we can praise you when things are going our way and when they're not, that we can praise you in the storm, that we can praise you, Father, going into battle, even though it makes no sense to anybody else in the world wants to wonder how in the world we could be so full of joy because we have all the hope in the world. Jesus Help us, Father, to be that light when we leave here today. That when people look at us and they see our situations, our circumstances, God, we can just point them to Jesus by the way that we live because we are trusting Him through the process. We're trusting Him through the battle. Lord, thank You so much for not being done with us yet. We pray, Father, that You lead and guide us. Bless each and every family here, each and every marriage, Father, each and every child. Our youth, God, bless them, Father, that they continue to grow and be all that you'd have them to be. Bless these marriages, Father, and bind them so close together. And help us, Father, all, that when we leave here today, Father, that we would be a great big lot for you, for you're not done with us yet. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you take a moment to give God some praise? God, you're not done yet. Mm.